Today we're going to be going over my full May budget where I'm going to be showing you my real numbers. I try sharing my story to remind readers that there is a way out. That with hard work, dedication, determination, motivation, it's all about having a plan for your money. And that's what gives you the true control. Holy crap, it just changed my life. And they're like, oh man, Nico. It takes time. It takes dedication. It takes work. But no more credit card debt. Welcome to the Budget Mom YouTube channel. Today, we are going to be going over my crazy May budget. May is a very busy month for me. Not only do I have two trips planned for this month, it's also the pantry and freezer challenge, savings challenge for May. I'm not gonna be home that often for the month of May. There's gonna be a couple of weeks where I'm here at home, but in the beginning of the month, I'm flying to New York. At the end of the month, I'm going to Tri-Cities for a baseball tournament. So there was a lot of budgeting and planning and organizing for this month. Today, we're gonna to be talking about my May 1st paycheck. So if you're not familiar, for the longest time, I got paid on the 5th and the 20th every single month. And because I'm a paycheck budgeter, that means I would create two separate budgets for the month every time I was paid. Now since leaving my full-time job and working for my business full-time or being self-employed full-time, I now get one paycheck and it's on the first of every month. So for May and looking at my May budget and my numbers, it's everything for the entire month. I'm gonna be going over my budget calendar as well as my paycheck bill tracker and how I'm stuffing my cash envelopes. So we're gonna be going over a lot for my May budget. One, we're gonna be going over my cash envelopes. I pulled out cash from my envelopes. The cash envelopes that I'm gonna be using for this month. My budget calendar, my actual budget, as well as my cash envelope breakdown and what it looks like when I go to the bank to pull out cash for my envelopes. So for the month of May, I always start my budgets with my budget calendar. My budget calendar is literally my Bible when it comes to my budget. It has all of my different recurring bills that need to be paid for the month, any appointments and any events that I have going on. Now May was really crazy, and so I had to really start color coding things to keep, um, I like to be able to just quickly see what I have going on and having the colors really helps. So um, I have a couple of different appointments, but as you can see in the beginning of the month and the end of the month, I have these two trips planned. I'll be doing a full video on YouTube going over my vacation budgets, but for this video, I'm strictly gonna be talking about my May budget. So everything that needs to be included in my budget is on my May calendar. And what I do is, and I'm still in the habit of doing it, I like to color code what bills I'm going to pay with each paycheck. Now, because I'm only getting paid one time a month on the first, all of my bills for this month are being covered by this one paycheck. But if you were to have, say, two paychecks in the month, maybe you get paid on the 10th and the 24th, you would highlight this paycheck in one color and the 24th on an, another color for that, that paycheck, and you would highlight what bills you're going to pay with each paycheck. But that's essentially how my budget calendar works. For the month of May, I have my regular business income. Now up here, I like to list all sources of my income. Now I have it, I'm pretty lucky. I know exactly what I'm going to get paid because my paychecks don't change from month to month. They are a fixed paycheck from my business. Every single month I get one paycheck on the first of the month in for $4,032 from my business. That is my paycheck. I also get uh, money from my boyfriend, Chris. We live together, but we do our finances separately. It's a situation that's just kind of worked for us for us and so we've stuck with it. He gives me cash throughout the month to reimburse me for the bills. So I pay the bills up front, he hands me cash to pay for those half of the bills and I just add it to my income. So as you can see for the month of May, I have a lot going on. Not a lot has changed with my bills. My rent has increased by $25. Our lease was up in April and so we had to sign a new lease. Um, if you're familiar with part apartments, when you sign a new lease, usually your, your rent goes up by a little bit. So we signed on for another year. As I, um, we, 
I've decided to stay in my older apartment as I save up for my new house. I plan to, I'm on a savings journey right now to pay for my first house with cash. And so $8.50 a month for my rent. Like I said, it's a really old apartment here in Washington, so rent is not too bad. I have a couple of other things. Now in my regular bills, these are bills that I pay online. I take all of these bills and I leave that much money in my checking account to cover them. I include minimum debt payments as well as automatic savings contributions as regular bills. They're gonna happen month after month like clockwork and so I count them as fixed expenses. I also have my $80 for my cushion. I use a zero base budget, which means every dollar of my income is being used or planned for somewhere in my budget. So my income minus all of these expenses equals zero. When I first started budgeting, the one thing that I didn't like about the zero base budget was bringing my checking account down to zero every month. I have now started a checking account cushion that I've been doing it this way probably for the last six or seven years. I do $80 per paycheck. That money just sits in my checking account and sits as a checking account buffer in case a bill is higher than expected. If I need to do an online um, shopping, anything like that where I might need to swipe my debit card. Now I usually 99.9% .9 of the time I'm an all cash spender, which means I pay these regular bills online. Everything else is pulled out in cash for spending. So all of my bills this month equal $2,480. If you subtract that from my income, I'm left with $2,052. After my regular bills are paid online, I go to the bank and I pull out cash for my envelopes. And I did that here. This is what I use for my variable spending. Now variable spending your cash envelopes is a lot different than your fixed expenses. Your fixed expenses like your regular recurring monthly bills they tend to not change all that much or at all month to month. It's your variable spending where things can really go crazy and you kind of get to that question of where did my money go? Food, fun, gas, beauty, miscellaneous, and household. I have six cash envelopes. Now when you're choosing which categories to use for your cash envelopes, one of the things that I did in the very beginning was use categories where you're having a hard time with overspending. So the very first cash envelope I ever created was my food cash envelope. I was horrible with blowing my food budget every month. I've learned to start meal planning, which helped me a lot with cutting down my food expenses, but also just being aware of how much I was truly eating out, how many times I was going to the coffee store, all of these different things. Um, so this was the first envelope that I created for cash spending. Like I said, I use six different cash envelopes. So after you pay your regular bills online, you're gonna pull out cash for your cash envelopes. For me, I don't have any debt, because once you pay, once you pull out cash for your envelopes, so all of my envelopes equal 995. If I subtract that from the 2,052 I had left, that gives me $1,057. So pretty much if you can cover your bills and your variable expenses, which is your cash envelopes, you are good. However, a lot of my readers, and I know you might want to either save or pay off debt, that's when you need to ask the question, what do I want to do with this extra income after I paid my fixed expenses and I took care of my variable spending in my cash envelopes? Since I don't have debt, it all goes to a savings plan. Now, I have multiple different savings accounts. One of the things that I do is I like to have sinking funds. Now my sinking funds are used to save for holidays events or events in the future that those were the holidays that I felt kind of pressured to use my, my credit card or debt. And so I save a little bit every month so when that expense comes up or that holiday or event, I have the cash available. My sinking funds include 4th of July, my boyfriend's birthday, my son's birthday, Christmas, back to school, Valentine's Day, and I have a car maintenance fund. So these are my holidays and events, and I keep these in sinking funds that look like this. I save for all of my holidays and events in these cash envelopes. 
The only exception to, to my sinking funds is my car maintenance fund. My car maintenance fund is a separate savings account I have at the bank. I just do an online transfer when I get paid. So when I pull out cash for my cash envelopes, it includes these cash envelopes as well as any sinking funds for my holidays and events that I save with cash. My sinking funds equal 239 if I subtract that from the $1,057 that I had left after paying my bills and pulling out cash from my envelopes, I'm left with $818. Then I really have to decide what are my savings goals? What are my priorities? What are the things that I'm trying to obtain by budgeting my money? What, I'm, what am I trying to get to for my goals? So for me, my biggest savings goal right now, like I explained, was my house. But I had an unexpected trip that came up for the month of May. My boyfriend's playing in a baseball tournament in the Tri-Cities. I had to have set money aside for that trip. So I've decided to use some of my leftover money this month, $500 for that trip. So even though usually I would save all of my leftover income to my house savings, I had to figure out to pay for that unexpected tournament. So I'm using 500 to pay for that. So this is how I organize my income. I use a paycheck bill tracker. It acts as my budget. As far as pulling out cash for my envelopes. I use a cash envelope breakdown that looks like this. I list all of the envelopes that I need cash for, and I use the cash breakdown area to list how and what bill denominations I want for each envelope. Now, one of the psychological things that I kind of learned on my financial journey is that it's really a lot harder to hand someone a bigger bill than it is a smaller bill. And I tend to find that at the end of the month, if I have cash left over in my envelopes, they're usually the bigger bills. I spend the small ones first. So when I pull out cash from my envelopes, I start with the largest bills and work my way down. So for instance, you can see on my cash envelope breakdown, food, for example, is $400. So I pulled out four $100 bills. Fun is $100, I pulled out two $50 bills. So I really try to do the largest bills and then work my way down. When I'm done um, filling out the cash envelope breakdown, I already used the one for May, so let me show you the one for June. These teller slips, is what I, they're what I use to pull out cash for my envelopes. So for the month of May, here's my teller slip, I pulled out cash for my envelopes and now I'm ready to stuff my envelopes. These are the cash envelopes that I'm using for this paycheck. It's just a really pretty fun spring print that I designed. So the first thing I do is I just start going down the line on my budget in these cash envelopes. So for food, I have $400. So I take out four $100 bills. And I always make sure that it matches up with my cash envelope breakdown right here. So food is four $100 bills. So one, two, three, four. I find my food envelope. Now, I did not have any cash left over in my envelopes from last time. Usually, I have a little bit of cash from last month's envelopes that I roll into this month, but I decided to use all of that for my house savings. So, I'm essentially starting back to zero with my cash envelopes. So, it's just with my budgeted amount. Fun, I have $100. So that's two $50 bills. And I do this for each one.
my cash envelopes for my variable spending have been stuffed. Now I'm going to fill my sinking funds. funds have been stuffed. All of my cap variable cash envelopes have been stuffed and I have no cash left so I know that I filled them all correctly. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to fill out my sinking funds savings tracker. So on my sinking funds savings tracker I like to write how much I've contributed to each sinking fund. So I like to keep an update, updated balance of all of my savings goals for my holidays and events. So as you can see for May, I have yet to fill this out. So the next thing that I would do for my budget is I would write down how much I contributed to each sinking fund. So for Valentine's Day, I did $14, 4th of July, I did $17. Chris's birthday, I did $34. James's birthday, I did $29. Christmas, I did $73. And back to school, I did $32. And then I would write an updated balance by adding the beginning balance to what I added for the, for the month. It would give me a nice ending balance for each sinking fund. So that's how I currently track my sinking funds with my sinking funds savings tracker. With my May budget, the one thing that is really helpful with organizing and planning your paycheck income, if you do not know how much you're going to get exactly for your paycheck, I always like to use a pencil and do an estimated budget. That's what these budget and actual columns are for. In the budget area, you're estimating how much you're gonna pay for those bills with an estimated income. If you write in pencil, you can go back and erase once you know or have a better idea of how much your income will be. So that's my entire May budget. If you have any questions, you can head over to my private Facebook community, TVM Family, and I'm happy to help over there. If